All right, good afternoon or evening, depending on where you're joining us from, and welcome to what we hope will be an informative and helpful webinar. I'm Elizabeth DePompe with the DAB Communications team at National Headquarters in Erlanger, Kentucky, and I'll be moderating today. In just a few moments, National Membership Director Doug Wells will give a presentation covering mydab.org. If you have questions, please type them in the chat as we go, and we'll answer as many as we can during the Q&A portion at the end. Doug and his team are always available, but we encourage everyone to take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Doug. Well, good evening, or as Elizabeth said, good afternoon, uh, depending on where you're at. Uh, certainly glad that you could all take some time to um, hang out with us this evening as we talk about uh, our exciting new tool at uh, mydav.org. Um, the uh, You don't need to worry about taking screenshots as uh, we're uh, recording this, and this will be available uh, uh, at dav.org here shortly. Um, probably tomorrow. And we'll also uh, ensure that if someone needs the slides, uh, you can just email me at DAV, or pardon me, at dwells at dav.org um, or give me a phone call. Uh, the number you, uh, the information you see on the slides there, that's uh, my direct information. Uh, happy and always look forward to, to talking to, to everybody out there in the field. So really appreciate uh, everything that you all do out there. Uh, so again, these, these slide, the slide deck will be available. And if you, uh, uh, need anything, uh, whether it's related to mydav.org or anything else membership related, don't hesitate to reach out. So first of all, what is dav.org? Uh, it's a self-service uh, and reports repository uh, <clears throat> for members and member leaders. Uh, so it's important to recognize that you don't need to be a chapter or department officer uh, to have access to mydav.org. Um, we encourage everybody to register uh, and uh, gain access to it. So all DAV and auxiliary members have access. Uh, DAV and auxiliary department and chapter unit officers have expanded roles-based access. So uh, things kind of key off of the, not only your individual membership, but also uh, any um, officer position that you might occupy as annotated on the chapter or department officer reports. So uh, the thing to remember here is that you wanna make sure you use uh, the membership number uh, through which you're trying to gain access to mydav.org. Um, some members have multiple memberships, um, you know, throughout the country if, as they've moved around. Uh, so just make sure that you're using the membership that you wanna key off and whichever one uh, you're serving in perhaps an expanded role in. So um, the uh, registration process for mydev.org is, is uh, twofold. So first of all, you need to complete the actual um, registration form. All this is online. Uh, you can see the, the web address there. Uh, you can also go to uh, you know, dev.org and um, hover over where it says membership. You'll get the little drop down men menu and go to uh, member resources. Um, you no longer need to have access, or pardon me, have your uh, membership number to gain access to this um, site. We used to call it members only, and you had to put in your membership number to get in there. Uh, no longer, anything that requires additional verification in that section has its own validation process. Uh, so if you just go again to dav.org, hover over where it says membership, You'll get the little uh, drop down menu, menu uh, click on member resources, and the uh, information regarding mydav.org is currently right at the top of the page. Uh, so it's a, a little bit easier than typing in the, the whole uh, site there. Uh, but you just, you know, essentially these few data points that you can see on the screen there, uh, just enter your name and contact information. 
Uh, and again, be sure to use the, the correct membership number uh, by which you want to access um, the site. You can certainly register more than one membership number uh, if you want to update some additional information on those other <clears throat> memberships that maybe you don't touch as often. That's You're certainly welcome to do that. But uh, the big thing is you want to make sure if you're, especially if you're serving in some kind of official capacity to use the membership number that you're uh, serving under. Uh, so once you complete the registration, it's going to prompt you to create a username and password. This stuff is unique to you. Again, this is a self-service site. So you can have your username and password uh, be whatever you like. Emails are commonly used for usernames. That's, that's absolutely fine. You want to make sure your username is something that you can easily remember. Um, the password's a little bit of a different story. Obviously, uh, we've got some site security and we'd like it to be uh, we need it to be uh, at least 12 characters long and include a special character, a asterisk or an exclamation mark or something like that. So, um, so as I mentioned, the, uh, the registration is uh, process is twofold. So once you complete the initial registration, you'll get this email acknowledging that you're not quite ready to rock and roll yet. Uh, you got to give my team a day or two to validate you into the system, at which point you'll get an email that looks something like this, um, you know, and it'll tell you that now you're ready to enter the system and use it. So don't uh, be concerned if, you know, right out of the gate, once you complete that initial registration process that you don't yet have access, uh, we've got to validate you into the system. And again, there's permissions that are based on whether or not um, you're serving in an official capacity. Uh, and need that expanded access. <clears throat> so uh, again, the login screen can be um, can be accessed through DAV.org. Uh, you know, at the member resources site, that's just an easy way to remember it. Um, certainly, uh, you can go to the to the main login screen and save this to your favorites. Um, you know, or create a, a link from your desktop, uh, and that that always uh, makes it. Uh, easy for future access. But uh, here, the username and password that you created when you initially registered for mydev.org is what you want to input. Uh, you can check that uh, remember login field if you're, um, if you're using your own personal computer. But if you're for some reason accessing mydev.org uh, on a public computer or a shared computer, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, and again, this is self-service. So if you do happen to forget your password or it's been a while since you got in there, uh, whatever the case, you can always click that forgotten password and it'll just send you a link to, to reset your password. So it's, uh, it's a pretty easy process. <clears throat> Pardon me. So this is, um, this is what uh, um, the uh, screen looks like once you get in here. Um, so after you log in, you'll be on the main page. Um, and you'll see all these different tiles and what functions that you can um, uh, access within the application. So again, access is based on criteria that we've set up in MyDAV.org that's reflective of your, of your roles or, or role within DAV. Um, even if you don't have uh, a role outside of, you know, a member uh, in the organization, it's important that folks register. Um, and the way I'm approaching this uh, is kind of a train the trainer. I would love for you all to, uh, you know, at, at uh, a chapter meeting or at some kind of conference or DEC meeting or whatever it might be uh, that you're doing in the department, uh, certainly point people to this webinar because, again, we are going to record this and post this. Or uh, feel free to share the slides and, and uh, if you're comfortable presenting the information. Uh, you know, happy to support you in that. And, and if you have any questions or concerns, you can always uh, reach out to me. We can work through it. But uh, I, I, I like for this to be really kind of a train the trainer type uh, deal so that, uh, you know, we can make sure that this rising tide is, is uh, lifting all boats. So, um, <clears throat> so once you, uh, you know, get to the main screen, you're going to be able to choose from the different tiles. So the first one I want to talk about, we're going to go through all these uh, uh, you know, in, in as much detail as needed, but uh, uh, I just want to make sure I cover everything that we've got there for you. But your the first tile is your member profile tile. So as you can see, uh, uh, 
you know, this is where you view your basic membership information. And you'll notice that this is an example of someone that has multiple memberships. So uh, if you can see the, uh, the, the first membership is here in uh, Frederick, Bristol, Kentucky 19. And the uh, second membership is in Indiana, uh, Dearborn County 75. So uh, all of your memberships will be listed, uh, even if you're just specifically using uh, one membership number to register and, and sign in. It'll still, the system is smart enough to know that you've got multiple memberships. Although, uh, again, the permissions will be um, derived from that one particular membership that you use to uh, register with. So the next uh, tile is the service record. And this is, I'm really excited about this. This allows individual members to go in and update their service record with the with DEV um, so they can review the full service record as, as we have it. Uh, if we don't have your information, you can certainly click add to enter your service information, or you can edit to make changes to existing information that we have. Um, <clears throat> so the thing I wanna point out here and, and ask folks to remember is that they, um, you know, in, in the past, especially in the earlier days of DAV, all the record keeping and whatnot, um, you know, there were things that we would process membership <clears throat> memberships with, but uh, certainly, you know, uh, maybe didn't have the best uh, recording on. All of our stuff has always been kind of self-reporting. So uh, if a member, you know, put that their enlistment date was, uh, you know, uh, October, uh, 1991 to, you know, April of, you know, 1994 or something like that. And they didn't have specific dates. That might be all that you see reflected. But so that's what's great about this. If any of this stuff is inaccurate, you can update that. And I would encourage every member to ensure that we have that ac accurate information in the system. The reason that's most important is because uh, in cases like DAV just helping to get the PACT Act uh, passed through Congress, um, you know, any information in there that could potentially benefit our members, um, you know, our legislative team or our service department can send out an email. Uh, we can query the system to say, tell us all the people that, you know, were exposed to burn pits per se. And uh, we'll be able to easily identify those folks in the system and make sure we let them know, hey, this new law has been passed and, uh, you need to contact your um, national service office if you're having any of these types of issues, that sort of thing. So we don't share this information with anybody that stays, uh, you know, within DAV. So uh, please feel free to, you know, share as much as possible. And, you know, there's no real PII here. It's, a, it's just information related to the, uh, to the, uh, to your service. So there's no, you know, personally identifiable information. Of course, we don't use social security numbers and anything that we do anymore, uh, you know, whatnot. So please uh, feel comfortable helping us out with this information and encourage your fellow members to do so as well. Uh, the next thing I wanna talk about is just the membership card request. So this is another great feature. It's uh, self-service automated. Just ensure that you enter your full membership number um, and then just pick whatever the reason is. You lost it, you're, you're damaged, you got stolen, whatever it was. And, uh, and we'll get you out a new membership card. This can take a, you know uh, up to 30 days, depending on where you live in the country. Uh, there's a couple of things that happen here. So we process the card file once a week, um, you know, Sunday evenings, and they get printed on Mondays and, and sent out. So if you, um, you know, request a new card on Monday night, you've got to wait that whole week until the next file uh, gets generated so we can get it out to the vendor and then out to you, of course. So, um, but kind of a neat thing. Uh, I know people still appreciate having the, the hard card in their file, or pardon me, in their uh, wallet like I do. Uh, transfer requests. Uh, we're still um, <clears throat> trying to automate this right now. Of course, we've got a PDF fillable uh, membership transfer form that you can complete and fill out and take with, print out and take with you to the chapter meeting if you're wanting to, uh, uh, wanting to uh, you know, transfer to another chapter. Uh, certainly the, the end goal here is to automate this and to utilize um, our notifications and um, uh, logins to, you know, as the digital signatures to uh, approve this kind of stuff. So um, that's still just a little bit over the horizon, but uh, our team is is working on this and we want to make this happen as soon as uh, the bandwidth for our 
IT folks opens up, uh, but it is uh, on the radar. Uh, so again, self-service, that's kind of the key term that you're gonna hear from me uh, quite a bit tonight uh, related to this. Uh, so again, you can update your username and password at your leisure. Uh, if you don't like the uh, username that you originally created, you can go in here and, and make a new one uh, with your login info. So uh, again, the same, the same uh, basic rules continue to apply to the password, 12 characters with a uh, unique character. But uh, feel free to change that uh, whenever you like. Uh, this is a great uh, piece here for those individual memberships, uh, your membership payment history. Um, so again, here's an example of a member that has memberships in uh, three different states. A um, couple of key words, we use some of the out-of-box technology or terminology that uh, came with uh, our CRM here. Uh, so when you see the term pledge, that equals your membership. And then, of course, pledge payment is payment towards that membership. And then designation is uh, the obviously the department that the membership is in. And you can also view all your due statements history uh, for your individual membership record. So um, if you got a part life payment out there that you want to pay off, you can come in here and, and set up those uh, set up those payments. You know, if there's an outstanding balance, there's an option to make that payment. Um, you know, the total amount, this is something to be aware of, the total amount does default to the total outstanding balance, but you're you're welcome to edit the amount here to just pay uh, what you'd like to pay. Uh, but we want to get uh, everybody turned over to full life members as quickly as possible. Um, so uh, deceased notification, um, this is always a, a big topic of conversation as I travel around the country. Um, so this gives you the ability to notify us here at headquarters uh, of the death of a member. Uh, so you can enter their full name and a full member number, uh, really rely heavily on our chapter and department leaders to help us keep our roles up to date. Um, if you know the deceased date, uh, certainly that's helpful. If you know the month and year, just put a one in there. That's fine too. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, just as close as you can get it. Um, if you go back to submit another member, the previous member's details may still be there. Just clear the information. And under the next notification, if you have multiple that you have to do at once. Um, the reason this is important is, um, as I mentioned earlier, we don't utilize social security numbers in anything that we do. Um, so, um, you know, we have to rely on other information like obituaries and things like that. When you don't have, a, have something as specific as a social security number, it um, can create some issues there. So, um, you know, we have to rely on third party vendors uh, that help us manage our, our uh, membership roles here. Sometimes uh, we'll end up, you know, uh, knocking a junior off the rolls when it was actually senior that passed, that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, we know with, with a pretty good reliability that when this comes in from our chapter and department folks uh, that, you know, they're, they were living around or, you know, friends with usually uh, these folks that they're reporting on. So we do, we do appreciate that. It helps us keep the rolls clean and as clean as we can possibly keep them and uh, helps out with some other issues as well. So I appreciate all your efforts uh, in this regard for sure. Let's talk a little bit about the reports repository. Now this is the primary one uh, that'll be limited to chapter and department officers. Uh, <clears throat> so there, again, there's additional reports coming. Uh, we've, they're in the final stages of Q&A. Um, or QA, pardon me, quality assurance. This uh, So this section, you know, is only accessible by department and chapter officers. So if you're on the officer report, you're going to have access uh, to this, uh, to this uh, information, um, you know, in those elected or appointed capacities. Um, so the population summary, obviously, is a summary of the member population and department chapter. It lists the new member goal for each department uh, or unit. Um, you know, so <clears throat> um, this is the big one that helps you tell whether or not a chapter or department is uh, is making their goal. So uh, it's a great report to keep an eye on, uh, to share at uh, your 
your chapter meetings or other uh, functions within the chapter department, you know, to kind of help figure out where you need to be, how aggressive you need to be with attaining your, your goals, uh, recruitment goals for the membership year. Um, you know, uh, it, a lot of people appreciate this report um, and keep an eye on it uh, quite often. So just, um, uh, oops, pardon me. So um, if you need anything, you can, you can print this off in the, um, in the Excel format, but it's really kind of like a de facto PDF version because you can't really change it because all the pretty columns and whatnot. You can also um, print this off uh, in a, oh, pardon me, this one is straight Excel, I'm sorry. This one is straight Excel. So uh, let's move on to the membership listing report. This one you can report, you can print off in um, the Excel, which is the de facto PDF or CSV. It doesn't have the columns, so you can go ahead and adjust the columns sort the columns uh, as you need. Uh, but this one, the membership listing report provides a listing of the members in your department of chapter, obviously. Uh, and, you know, you can generate multiple statuses and types within this report. So using the control button, what I recommend is if you can see over here, if you can see my cursor uh, on the side, you again, using the control or shift buttons, you can select or deselect these over here. I would select all of the actives uh, for sure when you're running this report to make sure you're getting the most accurate um, representation of what you got going on in your chapter. This unclaimed, that just means we've got some information back from the post office that we don't have a good address for that individual, but that doesn't mean they're not an active uh, member. So, um, you know, if you have any questions on all that, certainly uh, just reach out. Uh, so again, you can view, save, and or print uh, your membership listing report. Um, we also have the historical population summary. This is new. So if you want to go back and do some kind of comparative analysis and, and take a look at what your population summary was at any given time, uh, we run them more often than 6.30, uh, June 30th and July 1st, but um, you know, it's typically on Mondays when we do. There is an occasional one-off where it might not be on that day, but um, we always capture where we're at year-end and where we're at membership year beginning, which is July 1st. So this is kind of a, a unique tool that you can use to do that comparative analysis. Where were we at this point last year? That sort of stuff. So uh, people are pretty excited about that that are report junkies. Uh, so again, you can review the report and save and or print it. So the membership activity report uh, lists our member activity. So people that are making payments, there's address changes, uh, folks moving in and out of the uh, chapter or department. So um, again, this one's available in both PDF and uh, CSV. Uh, and you can review it, save it and or print it. So um, that essentially covers uh, mydav.org. I wanted to take just a few moments here to talk general membership. Uh, and I am going to be doing, we'll send out the notification here. We're going to do a, a more detailed general membership um, uh, webinar here next week. So we'll get the information out for that first thing in the morning. But um, certainly look forward to you joining me for that as well. But wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about uh, some things just to make sure we're kind of all up to speed. Um, so as a reminder, our goals are now based on both new part life and full life uh, memberships. They both count towards goals. So full life conversions, part life to full life, that no longer counts towards goal. But all new part life and new full life memberships, that counts towards goal. Uh, so goals are based on the prospect hot list. Not every uh, department and, of course, uh, chapter jurisdiction is created equal as it, as it pertains to um, the number of eligible veterans that live in their jurisdiction. So <clears throat> we wanted to really kind of uh, establish a real-world criteria for the goal. So, of course, a chapter in Killeen, Texas, where there's just a ton of uh, veterans and military retirees, uh, member prospects there that, 
you know, in that chapter's jurisdiction, their goal is, of course, going to be much higher than, say, a chapter in eastern Rhode Island where there isn't such a, you know, large uh, member prospect community. So, um, you know, the chapters that have the larger goals now, they have really an obligation to help kind of buoy the, the, um, the organization because that's where the low-hanging fruit is. Um, and I just don't want you out there, you know, bouncing around, hoping to bump into somebody that's eligible for membership. So we created these hot lists. Um, all you need to do is reach out to me at either uh, the phone number there or membership public uh, at DAV.org. Uh, my team will, um, you know, happily generate uh, the hot list for your chapter uh, and get that out to you. So you can know, you know, with a pretty high degree of uh, uh, assurity that the folks on that list are eligible for membership in DAV. Um, mostly on the hot list, we don't have phone numbers or email addresses, uh, but there are apps and sites out there that can help you acquire that. Uh, some of our chapters around the country are being really creative with uh, their hot list. They're actually, because they have their addresses, uh, they're actually going out door to door and, and visiting folks and saying, hey, we're here for the chapter. Uh, just wanted to check on you. You know, how's your claim? You get to and from your medical appointments okay? Like to invite you to this event we got. You have any volunteer opportunities for us for LVAP, whatever it might be. Um, and when people see the value of DAV, they're, you know, first, they're much more amenable to, to giving us that uh, $300 for a membership. Um, DAV has always been a, a service first organization, and this is a great way to utilize that. So um, hopefully, um, uh, you know, we, we get a bunch of requests for hot lists tomorrow and we can get those out to you. So these, um, these folks are just waiting for us to talk to them. So I don't want you, again, bouncing around in the ether, just hoping to bump into somebody. I'm, I'm trying to tell you exactly where these folks are at. So. Uh, after a, a bit of a hiatus, a long hiatus, unfortunately, uh, we've now relaunched our Recruit a Warrior um, program. So uh, if you go to dav.org slash warrior, go ahead and enter your membership number. Um, once you enter your membership number here, just hit return this verify membership number uh, button will highlight, you can click it and it'll generate not only a recruiter warrior link that you could share via text or email or share it on your social media, uh, but now it actually offers, uh, generates a QR code that you can utilize as well, um, which is pretty exciting. You can copy and paste that QR code and put it on different stuff, whatever you wanna do. Also, and you, you all are kind of the first hearing about this uh, out in the field, um, DAV's station, or business cards rather, uh, you'll actually be able to use your Recruiter Warrior link when you order DAV business cards and it'll put your Recruiter Warrior QR code on your business card. So as you're handing out business cards, um, you know, people can just use their phone and, and uh, take a picture of that QR code. It'll take them right to your personalized um, membership application. Um, so that's the biggest thing about uh, Recruiter Warrior is that you don't have to worry about giving people your sponsor information. Uh, you can just share the link with them. They can click from their device, sign up with their credit card, and you're going to get credit for that recruitment. There's uh, no easier way to recruit. The one thing I would I would uh, remind people of, if you are going to share this <clears throat> on social media, um, make sure uh, you know that people understand that if they share your post on social media with your link and somebody converts to a member um, using that link, you're going to get credit for that, not the person that shared your, your link. So if they're happy to give you credit for that recruitment, uh, by all means, they should share away. But so I want to make sure that's clear for everybody. Um, so <clears throat> again, uh, if you have any issues or concerns about Recruit a Warrior, don't hesitate to uh, shoot us an email or give us a call. We'll get you squared away with all that. Um, so I just want to talk about March Membership Madness one more time here. Um, you know, this is kind of a cool program that we have uh, that happens toward the beginning of the year. So the, the idea here is to kind of uh, set a psychological prompt. So uh, when you start hearing about the 
the conference basketball tournaments or the NCAA tournaments, uh, it reminds you that, okay, we need to start looking at the chapters, membership goals and, and figuring out, you know, how far we are from making goal. One of the biggest things that I noticed is that there's always this, you know, huge push to make goals toward the end of the membership year, you know, mid June or something, uh, when quite often it's, it's too late. You just can't, uh, you know, usually uh, recover when it takes that long. So I wanted to just kind of give people a little bit of a, a notice that, um, hey, it's time to start thinking about this, but maybe it's far enough removed from the holidays where the pocketbooks weren't hit as much. Um, and it's just kind of a fun way to um, create some some friendly rivalries and camaraderie between departments. So looking really for the departments to take the lead on this. We have two different ways to win at the department level. There's the uh, department champion, of course, which uh, garners the, the very beautiful cup there on the left to proudly display at their department headquarters. That's the individual department that goes from week to week, to, or pardon me, from bracket to bracket uh, without being knocked out of the tournament. Uh, but fear not, if you are knocked out of the tournament, I still want you all to recruit because if you recruit the most members on a percentile basis, um, you can still become the department MVP. Uh, and we have split this award for, uh, you know, uh, more years than we haven't uh, within the tournament. Um, we also recognize our top two individual recruiters. Uh, the only catch is that you have to recruit at least 25 members. Uh, and all of this recruitment related to March Membership Madness has to happen online. Um, you know, we also got the... Uh, uh, the winning departments also get $250 gift cards from Office Depot. Um, the reason we want this to be online, well, first of all, uh, I want to get us back to organic recruiting, right? Having that, uh, you know, our recruiters out in the field um, that are, you know, touching base with these folks every day. I want to help improve that. Um, of course, we do an awful lot of recruiting here from national headquarters, whether it's, you know, through Facebook or, ads or online or search or whatever it might be, <clears throat> but the, the, the best recruits into DAV always come from our members who invite them to the organization, mentor them into the organization, uh, and, you know, share, you know, that camaraderie with them. Um, you know, I, I really don't know one <clears throat> uh, national leader or department leader that's ever, <clears throat> pardon me, that's ever been recruited from a, a Facebook ad. So it's definitely helpful when you all are out there doing that one-on-one -on -one recruiting. The other thing <clears throat> it's important to recruit folks online for is that there's a higher conversion rate. So um, when we look at the analytics, two things become very apparent. One, <clears throat> that there, when people sign up online with a credit card, um, they're likely to give us $300 out of the gate, which is great. That's the best case scenario. But also because we've got the installment payments going, if they do decide to pay in installments, it's fire and forget. We don't have to, to uh, expend organizational resources on sending them quarterly statements so that that uh, conversion rate is much, much higher. So, um, you know, it's much uh, more beneficial to everybody than just getting a, you know, a check for 40 bucks and then we never hear from the person again. Um, and remember, just any online recruiting platform can be used. So whether it's your, um, whether it's your phone or iPad, their phone, whatever it is, if it comes in electronically, um, it counts. So appreciate all the effort there with recruitment, of course. This is kind of what the bracket looks like. So you'll notice here, Virginia actually won the tournament last year, um, but little Wyoming uh, gave them a fight, um, and Virginia just barely eked it out. So, and Wyoming actually ended up being our MVP there. So it was a, it was a great battle all the way to the end. And, um, it, you know, the better you do in a, in a current year's uh, tournament, the next year you might get the uh, first round by and preferred seating. So um, it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. And we always present the uh, trophies um, at our uh, commanders and adjutants meeting. Uh, toward the end of June or early part of July. Uh, just a couple more quick reminders. Um, another reason to re recruit folks online is that you can get up to three points instead of the traditional two for the new members uh, being
being recruited. So you get more bang for your buck and for your effort when you recruit people online. Um, we did a couple of few years ago start expiring older points like any rewards program. Um, we just had too much on the bottom line there. And there were people, a lot of people on there that only recruited one or two members and, um, you know, didn't really have enough to buy anything in the store, uh, that sort of thing. So these are all now uh, expired on a three-year rolling basis. So once you've had points on the, on the system for longer than three years, that next year-end process will we'll drop those, will expire those points. Uh, so make sure you're using your points. Um, we always expire the older ones first, so feel comfortable in that. But uh, use those points. I, I want to get you that that DAB swag and that cool gear. It's uh, very cool. You don't have to wait for national convention, of course, to, to utilize your points. Just go to DAB.TrophyWards.com uh, or give the procurement department here at national headquarters a call and they get you squared away. One last thing, uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, DAV.EnjoyMyDeals.com, uh, that's our new member advantages uh, site. So you go there, you register. Again, all you got to give them is your membership number, a name, and an email address <clears throat> and a password that you create. It'll register you in the system. And then you go out, you get on your phone, whether it's an Apple device, Droid device, whatever. Uh, Go to the, the My Deals uh, app, look for the My Deals app, download it, and uh, you can use that username or password that you uh, registered with, and uh, you're ready to rock and roll with some very nice discounts here. Uh, if you're familiar with our Member Advantages program, before we had, um, you know, a baker's dozen or so of vendors that we had direct relationships with. It took a lot of time, energy, and finance to maintain those relationships, and they were really exclusive to DAV, and some of the vendors, you know, just threw everything at us, including the kitchen sink, which was great, but uh, we want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, we're with uh, folks that our members, you know, want to engage with, um, you know, so now through the My Deals app, you literally have access to thousands of discounts. It uses geolocation, so it knows where you're at. It'll give you all the discounts in your area. Uh, you won't see discounts from just the national or regional brands that we're all familiar with, but you'll quite often see the mom and pop pizza shop that Access has negotiated a deal with. So uh, a lot of these deals are almost the same that uh, you know we get. Uh, we got through those individual relationships. Um, but I, you know, I can't tell you how much our members are appreciating using this right now. Uh, essentially when you see a deal you like, you just generate the coupon, present it to the, to the vendor or the retailer, uh, and you get the discount. It's that easy. So, um, you know, if you're looking to buy flowers or looking for, you know, shopping, uh, here at Christmas time, um, certainly don't forget to use the, uh, the My Deals app, um, uh, you know, there's great uh, also uh, discounts on travel, hotels, that sort of thing. A lot of these uh, deals like that, when you utilize them, not only do you get a discount, but DAV also gets a percentage that we can then utilize to put back into our programs and services. So it's definitely a win-win across the board. Please uh, encourage um, everybody um, to, to download the My Deals app and, and utilize it to its full extent. And that brings us to the end of the formal presentation. I am ready for questions. Elizabeth, if you've got some there. Yes, we have several. Thank you, Doug. And again, if you have questions, um, feel free to type them in the Q&A box and we'll get to as many as we can. All right, so first question, how can I tell if I've already registered for mydab.org? So uh, if you go in, in there to mydab.org and click the forgotten password, um section it'll kind of tell you whether or not your email address has been registered or not so it'll tell you if it if it can't find it if it can find it it'll shoot you to the link to um uh to uh, generate a new password okay great thank you why would a person have more than one membership and what are the rules for i guess for having multiple memberships yeah certainly so um the late great Past national commander Larry Polzine out of California had, I think it was 47 memberships when he passed. Uh, his goal, uh, and he almost made it, was to have a membership, 
in each state uh, in the union. So a member uh, can have a membership in, uh, you know, one membership in each state. And then of course, uh, Puerto Rico and DC, that's all you're allowed to have is one membership in, in those states. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it uh, the restriction is really uh, for uh, voting integrity and that sort of stuff. So when you register for a department or national convention, you have to declare what uh, chapter you're registering as a delegate from. Um, but it's just a, a fun way to, you know, support the organization. Uh, myself, uh, when I first got hired by DAV, um, I got hired out of our Phoenix office, but uh, before I had a chance to work there, they asked me to go to Salt Lake. So I was there for 10 years. So my real first chapter was uh, chapter six in Utah. Um, so I, when I uh, moved uh, to go work at the Detroit National Office, National Service Office in uh, Michigan, uh, I left my membership there in, in chapter six just because I love those guys and, um, you know, bought a new membership in Michigan. Uh, and then, of course, when I came here to Kentucky, I bought a membership in Kentucky 19. So so there's no conflict. Uh, when I when I uh, go to national convention, I typically register as a as a member in, of Chapter uh, 114 out of Livonia, Michigan. Um, you know, that's just my personal preference. I was born and raised in Michigan, um, but I didn't want to take uh, the membership away from from those other uh, those other uh, chapters. And you know, what happens is every year I, I talked about our year end, year beginning processes a little bit. Uh, one of the things I have to do is take a head count uh, of all of our members um, and we pay what we call a year end distribution uh, based on the number of members, um, you know, that each individual chapter and department has. So if I was to have just transferred my lifetime membership from chapter to chapter to chapter, those uh, chapters would have uh, uh, lost those additional resources to, you know, fill the gaps in service between, um, you know, uh, what VA offers and what the reality on the street is. So uh, I was happy to have, uh, I'm happy to have more than one, one membership. Um, you, you can also have a membership, uh, you know, in the blind chapter, if you qualify for that, that's kind of the exception, but they're uh, not affiliated with a, a department per se. So that's a challenge to everyone here now is to beat 47 memberships. Exactly. That's it. Yeah, I want to see that happen. Yes. Yeah. Larry would love that. All right. Our next question is from a DEC in Tennessee. Will we be able to have access to more than one chapter's population summary and members? So, uh, you know, the, the system is is very high speed, low drag. Um, and I'm, I'm my assumption is he's asking that or she's asking that as a department executive committee member. Um, you know, we, the technology still does have its limits. It's much greater than what we had with the legacy membership system, which was nearly a three decade old platform. Um, but because it keys off the officer reports at the chapter and department level, which again, we've been able to expand access greatly. Um, you know, we, we just don't have the ability to uh, get that granular with, uh, you know, the, the individual uh, executive committee men within departments, that sort of thing. So, but here's the thing, uh, certainly reach out to me uh, if you have a need for a particular set of reports or whatever, uh, my team and I can can screen that and, you know, validate who you are, that sort of thing. And happy to share that with you. There, there's nothing, again, there's nothing uh, proprietary in those reports or that uh, typically somebody could use to, to hurt somebody. So, um, you know, just uh, shoot us an email, give us a call, and we'll, we'll work on that for you. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead a couple of questions because I think it'll clarify maybe what you just said. Um, will district executive committee members be considered department officers? No, because again, it keys off of what we input based on the department officer report, uh, officer election report. So uh, DEC folks are not listed on that report. So that's the limitation. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yep. All right. Someone said that they tried to enter medals last week. I think they're talking about in their military record or history that did not allow them to do so. Are there any known limitations there? No. Uh, if that individual could send me an email 
uh, so we can look at that service record and see exactly what they're talking about. I think it's pretty comprehensive, but I just want to be clear that, um, you know, it, whether it's a, a design limitation or if he's having a technical issue. So if that individual could shoot me an email at dwells at dav.org, I'd love to take a look at that. And for anyone who, who might experience technical issues or problems accessing, should they just email you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sometimes if we, uh, well, let me say this, membership public at DAV.org. Uh, I got a full team of, of membership specialists that, uh, you know, live and breathe this stuff every day. And quite often they can uh, turn answers around to you a lot quicker than I can if I'm on travel or whatever it might be. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm happy to take emails uh, or phone calls. Uh, but membership public at DAV.org, you know, if, if it's a, if it's not a uh, executive, you know, if you don't need an executive to weigh in on, you might get a little bit quicker turnaround time that way. I just, I love uh, pumping up my staff and they love uh, communicating with you all. So uh, don't hesitate to use them as well. But if, it, if you're, you know, uh, running in trouble somehow or whatever it is, don't hesitate to reach out to me. That's why I shared that information at the beginning of the slide deck. I, I love hearing from y'all. And um, if I can't fix it, if my team can't fix it, we're going to, you know, we embrace the no wrong door approach here. Um, you know, we'll get you the person or the, the folks that can get you squared away for sure. Great. Thank you. All right. Someone asked, can I request a card for another member? Um, no, it, that, well, yes, you can. You just email us at dev.org or or pardon me, at membershippublic at dev.org, or uh, give us a phone call here at the membership department. We can get that generated. Uh, right now, the, the limitation in, within uh, my dev.org is that, again, it keys off of your own membership number. Uh, however, uh, you know, that's kind of a, that's a, uh, a stretch goal is we want to get our chapter and department leaders to be able to have access to other folks' records. Um, we just we're working through some security issues and some other things uh, to try to realize that uh, that capability in a, in a safe manner. Great. All right. For cities with multiple chapters, will we get an entire hot list and separate them? So that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> the way we've always addressed that, and I want to continue to address it this way. Well, first of all, just to make people understand, the way we do the hot lists. Um, the requirement is we send out a list, a spreadsheet, essentially, to the de departments every year. They'll probably be getting those in the next month or two. And we leave it up to department leadership to tell us what zip codes should be assigned to what chapters. So the hard and fast requirement is that not every, um, you know, is that every zip code be assigned to a chapter? A, a zip code can be assigned to multiple chapters, but every zip code has to, to be assigned to a chapter. We understand uh, that that doesn't always kind of make sense, you know, as the crow flies. Um, some, some zip codes are not necessarily geographically convenient to a particular chapter. Uh, it just happens that, you know, there's no chapter in that area, and we need to make sure that I, we default to what the department wants because they understand the lay of the land in the department better than I do from my perch here at uh, national headquarters. So, um, so in that case where you've got, you know, perhaps two chapters that are in the same city or borough and maybe share some zip codes, that sort of thing. Again, the hot list, uh, depending on what the department returns to us, you know, your hot list may have zip codes that are included on other chapters, hot lists. And that's a great thing. I, you know, if you're both recruiting the same, same folks, uh, whoever gets their first wins, I love that. Uh, and trust me, especially in those types of situations, we're always gonna have more than enough member prospects on the hot list to go around. One more thing, just a point of clarification on the hot list. If you're that chapter in the example that I kind of used in Eastern Rhode Island or whatever, um, you know, and there's not a ton of folks on your on your hot list, to make goal, the minimum number you, you need to recruit is 10. So that's uh, kind of the floor there that we're, that's how we generate that goal if you didn't have a bunch of folks on your hot list. All right, thank you. All right, someone asked, what if I cannot find or remember my membership number? 
just give us a call or shoot us an email at membershippublic at DAV.org and we'll look it up for you. Great. All right. How do you know how many points you have for recruiting to use in the store? Uh, again, that's another reporting mechanism that we want to get out to you, but you're certainly welcome to uh, give us a call and we can share that information with you. No sweat. Plus, um, our folks uh, in the procurement department here that operate our local DEV store here at National Headquarters, they can look that up for you as well. No sweat. So is that information that um, is or will be available in my DAV.org? I want to try to get that into the member record. Yes, uh, it's okay. not something that's there yet. And, you know, we've got some bigger fish to fry right now uh, because we've got a, a workaround where they can just shoot us an email or give us a phone call. Uh, that's probably a little bit down the road, but uh, certainly it's something I want to do. I want to make, you know, I want to, I want to teach everybody to fish here. I want everybody to be self-sufficient. That's, that's a, another thing we can uh, knock off the list for sure. All right. When will advanced access be available for the department level officers? When will advanced access? Yes. They, may, they might be referring to some of the reports that aren't yet available. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, like I said, those the other reports that we're going to make available are in QA right now. Uh, so hopefully we'll be rolling those out pretty quickly. Um, you know, advanced access uh, could also mean the ability to look at other members' records, that sort of thing. Again, that's still a bit over the horizon, but we are working on it. If if they meant something else, uh, please shoot me an email at dwells at dav.org. On the activity report, can you add the veteran's phone and email? I think that's a, a request. Interesting. Um, again, shoot me an email on that, and I'll talk to our IT folks uh, about that. I, I can see where that could be helpful. Um, it is, if we have it in the system, available on the membership list. Um, of course, there are some spacing limitations and formatting limitations on that report. But, but yeah, shoot me an email uh, and let's talk about that. Great. When will a system be developed so that commanders can track recruiting production in the chapters by members? Read that again to me, Elizabeth, please. Sure. When will a system be developed so that commanders can track recruiting production in the chapters? Uh, so, chapter officers, or pardon me, department officers have access to the chapter uh, population summary reports. Um, so, they should be able to look that up, no sweat. You don't have to, you, you can also look at the department population summary, and you can just uh, you know, generate the section of the report that that displays where all the, the chapters are at. So that ability is there in the population summary. Can I register at mydav.org without a membership number? No, we we have again, we have to have a membership number. I mean, that's really kind of the, the whole thing. You have to have a membership and a membership number. And we have a comment from someone who said that they enjoyed the meeting. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you for attending. Yeah. Um, let's see. We want to invite DAV women veterans to a department event. Is there a way to access a department list by gender? You know, in the old system, we had a uh, report by gender. Um, and I think in the, we can still potentially run that. I'll have to look at it. But here, here's the thing with, you know, demographics. Um, again, going back to um, the earlier conversation of self-reporting, right? Um, uh, you could say, hey, Doug, give me a, a list of um, all of the female members in the department, and I can query the system for that. Uh, chances are it's not going to be every female veteran in the department because, um, you know, for some reason, people still to this day try to send us in, you know uh, membership applications that are incomplete for whatever reason so um you know for a long time we didn't require a lot of that information um and there's still ways to get around you know giving us that information i'm certainly not going to because of one demographical type uh you know data point reject somebody as a member if they meet the you know required eligibility uh for membership but uh, just be aware that if, if we were able to generate a report based on whatever 
you know, uh, demographic you were looking for, it, it more than likely than not is, is wildly off because of all that uh, stuff that's self-reporting. I can't, you know, uh, force people to give me that type of information, unfortunately. All right, when pulling department membership, can we get it in alphabetical order for the entire department? Yeah, so if you generate, I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about the membership list for the department, which, you know, depending on what department you're in, that could be a, a monster of a report and it would take a while to generate. Uh, but if you generate it in a CSV, uh, you should be able to support uh, to uh, generate that in, um, pardon me, if you, dip, if you generate it in CSV, you should be able to sort it uh, by, by name. So uh, again, it'll just be, it won't be pretty with all the headers and stuff like that, but you'll understand what the columns are and you can do what you need to do with it. Uh, but that, you know, again, depending on what department you're in, probably the smallest department, that's gonna be a monster of a, of a report there. All right, we have a couple of minutes left. So if anyone has any last minute questions, please go ahead and submit those now. Um, Doug, I have a question. Sure. Can, can um, department or, or chapter leadership register members for mydav.org on their behalf? Um, well, if they had a unique email address uh, for that individual, um, you know, I wouldn't recommend that again because you need to, uh, when you register, part of the registration process is developing your unique password. Um, so I would say no. Right. All right. And then if you could just kind of summarize um, you know, what are the advantages of having members register and, and utilize mydad.org? So great question. Um, you know, at the, uh, uh, at the beginning, I kind of talked about, you know, the importance of, of as many members as possible registering for mydad.org. So updating that service info, making sure their memberships are squared away, all that great stuff is important. Um, you know, DAV members are service oriented. So if, if they haven't already served in some official capacity, they likely will. If you're already registered in DAV.org, as soon as we get that officer report, uh, you know, your permissions within the system will be updated. So it just really knocks that, uh, that turnaround time down. Uh, so, you know, if you register and then for whatever reason, never open it up again for a year or two once you've ensured all of your service record information is correct and all that good stuff, um, and you're content with your chapter and all that stuff, perfect. Um, then you don't have to worry about it anymore until you would need to get in and access the reports repository probably. Uh, the other thing I'd remind folks of is the information that I presented tonight is not where DAV.org ends. Um, we are constantly looking at ways, as we talked about during the Q&A, for ways to improve uh, not only the information that's available within mydav.org, but also the user experience. Uh, so we're going to be adding stuff to this all the time. And again, I continually welcome feedback on ways to improve not only the, the site, but also the information contained therein. So again, just please encourage everybody to to uh, register and, and get access to the site as soon as possible. It's great stuff. Great, Doug. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Lots of great information. And thank you to everyone who attended tonight and asked thoughtful questions. Your interest and commitment help DAV continue to grow and be the resounding voice for America's disabled veterans. If you have any follow-up questions, you can reach Doug via email at dwells at dav.org. As Doug mentioned, you can also email membershippublic at dav.org. Also a reminder that Doug will host another webinar on November 14th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time in which he'll cover the basics of membership benefits and recruiting. Thank you all again and enjoy the rest of your day.